creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. I'm so glad you joined me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to make a simple costume for kids. We'll demonstrate some on-the-go snacks and show how to do faux quilting with stamps. If you like to make Halloween costumes or even just play clothes for your kids, you'll really enjoy the project we'll show in a few minutes. My guest is Karina Gardner, and she's a designer and crafter from Salt Lake City, Utah. Her company is Karina Gardner Incorporated. Another guest is John Sukor, and he's a chef with Core Food Innovations in Ashland, Virginia. John also represents the California Fig Advisory Board, and today he's going to demonstrate how easy it is to cook with figs and make some simple on-the-go snack bars and power bars that are packed with flavor and sustainable energy. And we'll begin the show today with crafter and designer Ann Butler. Ann will show how to use specialty stamps to stamp out a real quilt. Her company is Ann Butler Designs, and she's from Villard, Minnesota. Ann, thank you so much for being here. I know you've been in the quilting business uh, as a designer and uh, as a uh, quilter. Uh, you created your own line of stamps and ink. So, But I think that's important because you figured out ways to do other things. Not mm -hmm. everyone likes to do one type of craft usually. Um, well, let's just start with this because this isn't quilting. No, it's Or traditional stamped. quilting. Right, it's stamped. You actually quilt it, but it's stamped and it looks like individual pieces of fabric. So knowing that you've quilted before, you were able to figure out how to design special stamps mm -hmm. that would work. And what do, you, what do we mean by what unique qualities do your stamps have? The stamps come in clear and red rubber, mm -hmm. and they're geometric shapes that all go together like puzzle pieces. There's no lip on them, so you're able to place them right next to each other. You can see exactly where you're stamping. Uh -huh. Even with the red rubber, you, can, you know exactly where you're stamping. And that's how you created this, because mm -hmm. it looks like this was stitched, right. just like we would do in traditional quilting. Right, so you're able uh -huh. to place one and then another easily. I see. Because you can see what you're uh -huh. doing. But as I mentioned, uh, not everybody's into quilting, so right. uh, I guess from necessity, <laughs> or your, your imagination going wild, I'm sure. Let's show some of the other things that use, I guess, just geometric shapes yep, and stamps. Yep, that use the stamps. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's just start here. This is really unique. Okay, so this is a mosaic piece, uh -huh. and each piece was cut out using a, a paper trimmer. Uh -huh. And each piece is stamped on, so this is a patterned paper, and then you can just see barely the white of the stamp over it. It just gives it more dimension. It was a patterned paper to start with, mm -hmm. and then you stamped it in white yep. using various designs? Yeah, well, uh -huh. I used all the same design. I oh. used the diamond pattern. Oh, so it was I all can the see same. it, like right here. Yep. I can see this one. And then uh -huh. on some, it's lighter. It just kind of gives it more dimension. I see. Okay, this one is another mosaic pattern, but it has some extra elements. Right, this was a pattern paper, and then I printed out, I created and printed out the words to, to give it a saying. Uh -huh. And then, again, I used the paper trimmer to cut out all the squares and stamped over them. Okay, so the, again, these are individual. I thought maybe it mm -hmm. was strips, which I guess you could do too, but right. this is for the mosaic. Yep. Uh huh. Added a little bedazzle there on the bottom. Right. But I know one time when you were here, you showed me how to work with this polymer clay. Right. Uh -huh. So I took the stamps and I stamped right into the clay. So oh, you so you can see the, the uh -huh. diamond effect. Uh -huh. And then I took and I added just a little bit of the tacky glue uh -huh. on top after you know I had it cut the size I wanted. And I waited about 30 seconds for that to set up. And then I took foil oh. and rubbed on it, pulled it Lifted away, it. and then you get just pieces of foil effect to give it that color. That is interesting. And that's just with a, a tacky glue. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And like you say, the right product is really the key to the success. So don't Definitely. scamp on it sometimes. Now, how is this different other than I noticed the uh, yep. edges? I just took the square stamp and stamped continually around to, mm -hmm. to give it another look. Well, I, I like that. 
and the color combinations are just never ending. Well, this is my favorite right here. <laughs> so cute. So these stamps and these inks mm -hmm. are good for fabric too. Right. You have to heat set it. So I stamped out the little shapes how I wanted it mm -hmm. and then I heat set it with an iron and then I came over it with scribbles paint, uh -huh. threw glitter on top to give it that blank. Does it have to be set again or heat set no, again? No, uh, because that. it's a dimensional uh -huh. ink so I, I went around it put the glitter on, shook the glitter off, and it's ready. And this can be washed, I assume? Yep. You'd have to if it's you white. Ha you have to wait till the scribbles is all set <laughs> up. And look at this. Is this cute or what? So, yeah, just a little <laughs> matching outfit for my granddaughter. Oh, I see. Somebody very special. What a, what a neat idea. And I love bracelets. Right. So this is the same. Oh, it's a diamond. I see it's that. It's the diamond pattern, so it's the same as what was on the mosaics. And what I did was I used shimmers, Ursae Finishes shimmers, to paint the bracelet. Uh -huh. It's a wooden bracelet. Oh, uh-huh. And then I put some powder, metallic powders on top, and I used the stamp to pull away the pattern. It's almost like a reverse mm -hmm. design, isn't it? Yep, and uh -huh. then I put eco-epoxy on it to, to give it that it. shimmer. Uh -huh. Yep. Gosh, those would be quick gifts to make, wouldn't it? Easy. That'd be fun. I like quick and easy. I do, too beautiful necklace. I recognize this pattern from looking at your stamps. Right, and this is just a piece of wood. So it's just a wood base. I painted it and stamped over it. And because the stamps are flexible, you can just stamp, because right? uh -huh. this is a domed, right. you know, a little dome shape. So you wouldn't put it on the block. Nope. Then you'd just do, put it in your hand right. and use it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, add a little crystal and you're set. That's cute. Of course, I love to make cards, so this is save the best for last, maybe. <laughs> right, so you can do all sorts of things with the stamps. And this one, I stamped here and here, and then I put post-it notes over each of those shapes. And I stamped the square plaid over it. Oh. You pull away the post-it note, and it creates a whole new pattern. It's like using painter's tape when you paint. Right. That's great. Right. Okay. And these are actually the same card. This one is just done with all green, and uh -huh. this is with the multicolors. It looks totally different, doesn't right. it? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what's beautiful about it. And this one was done with triangles, and then the square, same technique, put the post-it note over this, uh -huh. and then I stamped the square so it doesn't show up. That's the only thing we need to be sure we remember to do mm -hmm. is to mask off what we don't want to right. stamp. Uh -huh. And that one is just the reverse oh, of uh -huh. these. I love this. And this one is just the over stamping where I stamped pink and black over it. This was white cardstock. This whole thing was white? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Could you have done it the other way? Yeah. Pink it, over black? Yep, and it gives oh. you a total different effect. I guess it would. And it depends which pattern you're using uh -huh. too. You know what I like about this though is if you don't have quite the color you want, you really just create your own. Right. Which makes it you, it's mm -hmm. individualized. Well, you just have more great ideas. You, you come up with products that I know everyone's going to be interested in, whether you're a real quilter or not, but we'll all enjoy trying it. Thanks very much, Ann. Thank you. John, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. I'm anxious to learn what a real chef likes to do with figs. Sure. Uh, before I had had someone on the show representing figs, I really have to tell you I'd never eaten one. Really? Fig Newton candy, or you know, the little Fig Newton cookies. Sure. Eaten those all my life and actually liked them. Sure. But uh, so why are you interested in helping us learn more things to do with figs? Yeah, no, that's a brilliant question. First of all, I think it's really interesting. You mentioned the Fig Newton. That's been around since the 1800s. Mm -hmm. I haven't been around quite that long. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly is a way that I think when you can help someone associate they've had a fig uh -huh. in something so popular and so well mm -hmm. known, I think it's a good bridge to get them thinking about, wow, all the great flavors that are in figs. And mm -hmm. I think why chefs are interested, because it is complex. It's, it's a sweetener. It adds color, it adds nutrition to something. There's a slight acidity to it. So these are all flavors that we look for when we're building layers of flavors, whether it's a savory dish, something sweet, or something as a snack. 
uh -huh. and I think uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about snacking. And I think if people will go to the California Fig Association's website, mm -hmm. I thought figs were just for sweets. Sure. That's the Fig Newton. But there are lots of the savory recipes. There's lots of recipes to use with meats. Uh, they really are very versatile, and there's lots of different varieties of figs. Really versatile. Yeah, the dark ones we have here are our uh, mission figs, both fresh and dried. Mm -hmm. All sun-dried, by the way. Sun-dried, okay. And then we have our Sierra figs, both fresh and dried. Now, and these look pretty much the same. These you would never know were the same variety. You wouldn't. That uh -huh. beautiful green turns into uh -huh. that golden color, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah Is there, absolutely. can you use them interchangeably in most recipes? Relatively interchangeably. Uh, you do have some slight textural differences between the dark and, and the light color. The light color has a nice meaty texture, a little firmer texture. Oh, uh -huh. And I find that the dark one uh, is a little smoother. Um, almost uh, the same bite all the way through the fig versus the light one has a little bit of a chewier Chewy. skin on the outside. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, we just have to try them ourselves That's right. and see. Absolutely. And they're, they're great for snacks and they're great to put in kids' lunch boxes or packing lunches for people to take with them. They sure are. And you mentioned the California uh, Fig Advisory Board website. So absolutely California, beautiful state equals beautiful fruit. Uh -huh. And um, they represent 100% of the nation's dried figs, as I dried. mentioned, all sun-dried. Oh, uh -huh. And uh, represent about 98% of the nation's fresh figs as well. Very important commodity for them. Absolutely. We're lucky to have. When are, are figs seasonal, or can <clears throat> we pretty much find them any time of the year? Yeah, there's some real uniqueness to that. So in, in the late spring, you get something called the Breba fig, which is a super large one, and it's oh. kind of coming on the branch extension. So as the tree bulks up and puts out its shooters, a, a fruit will come from that, and it's a really large, oh. very sweet, um, but not so fig-flavored fruit. And sometimes in old days, farmers would have tilled that into the soil because it oh. wasn't their proudest fig. It wasn't <laughs> the one that tasted so figgy. Oh, I see. I like it. It's actually it's a, li a little like a white peach in flavor, but it's a big, beautiful fig. I've never heard of that. Yeah, and then uh, so then we're just uh, finishing a season now uh, in the fall uh, of these fresh figs, mm -hmm. and these are all going to start to make their way towards the drying process, the sun drying okay. process. And shelf life for figs. Do we keep the fresh ones in the refrigerator? Best kept in a cool, dry place. Uh, refrigerated is good as long as you don't have the refrigerator set to seven, eight, or nine. Oh, don't uh -huh. want them too cold because they have a nice, delicate skin on them that mm -hmm. could freeze. Uh, you want to keep them cool. Um, I like to actually just keep them in a um, kind of in my pantry, uh, oh, and that's mm -hmm. cool enough for cool them. But they don't mm -hmm. last very long at my house. <laughs> I have <laughs> well, two most sons that don't <laughs> at ours either. Yep. And then the dried ones. Dried, just you can as long as you're keeping them cool, dry place, uh, you're uh, and just in the pantry again. Um, uh, and airtight. I like airtight because they're consi they're drying mm -hmm. as we sit mm -hmm. here, and they're um, they're very moist. Yes, there's a lot of good moisture to them. Um, but uh, I'd say easily a year or two out of them, no problem. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, I know you're going to make a, um, a power bar for yes. us. And I, I think about when people say, oh, I don't have time to eat breakfast, which I grew up mm. knowing that breakfast was the most important meal. Very so true. I think that's why power bars mm -hmm. became so popular, because everyone has time to grab one and eat it on the way to work. Certainly. <laughs> so 2014 really has been the year of the bar. If you look at your retailer, uh, there are entire aisles in the retailer mm -hmm. dedicated to bars uh -huh. and nutrition bars, power bars, energy bars, mm -hmm. protein bars, you name right. it. And uh, uh, one thing I like is uh, the homemade version. Uh, you can control you your flavors. You know what's going in. You know it. what's going into uh -huh. it. Uh, and we're going to make a, a real quick one here, very simply uh -huh. using lots of great fig ingredients. And first, we took mission figs, the dried ones, mm -hmm. bathed them a little, soak in some warm water for uh, about a couple of hours and process them here in just any just old food processor. Or just, made an, just, a nice sticky paste out uh -huh. of it. A little less water in there so it's nice and sticky because bars need glue. Oh, sure. Um, to and, hold together. That's mm -hmm. right. And most bars are glued together using lots of refined sugar. Mm -hmm. So we've eliminated that here. We've uh, cut out probably 75% of the sweetener in this bar. Oh, because um, the figs are so naturally sweet. The figs are doing the job for now, us. could we substitute the Sierras if we didn't Absolutely. have them to have the mission on hand? Absolutely, okay. yes. There's, a, there's a, again, a lot of balance of sweetness and flavor there, too. A little different flavor profile. A little bit more like a sweet white wine. 
mm. and a little bit more like a Cabernet or Merlot flavor coming from these. Flavors, and these also okay. have a little hidden chocolate flavor to them too that I find. That's, I mm. find it really delicious. Mm. That sounds good. So to do this really quickly at home, you're going to select, and we'll have the recipes available to the okay. viewers, but uh, we've got a bunch of beautiful things here. Almonds, uh, chopped up figs, uh, uh, some sliced almonds as well as coconut. Oh. And you can put oats. Um, we like putting a variety of spices in ours as well, which I mm -hmm. think you're going to try in a little bit. But once your dry ingredients in, are in there, all combined, uh, we're going to have a bit of a syrup. Now, in this case, we're going to use either something like an agave syrup or uh, a natural honey, oh. things that have a good glycemic index for them so that we're not adding refined sugar to the diet. That's good. This gets poured in here after it hits a certain temperature, and the recipe will show you how to do that. It's really helpful to have a candy thermometer for this because you're hitting what's called a hardball stage. You want that oh, sugar mm -hmm. to seize up and get really hard. So we would just paddle this on low mm -hmm. until it started to Mix clump together, together. Mm -hmm. and we knew it was ready. And it literally just comes out. And in a sheet tray, if you're going to do the bars, in a sheet tray you can use a rolling pin is what oh, we do. That's a good idea. And press it right in there and just leave it alone for a little while. Uh -huh. You know, let time do its thing. Let the sugars seize and come together. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's sort of ready to go. In this case, we've cut it into a bar, just like you said, great for your lunch, great for kids mm -hmm. snacking. And we also made little balls out of this as well. In this case, we rolled them in some sesame oh, seeds. Sesame. Mm -hmm. Great for little fingers. Uh, <laughs> it's such a healthy snack for children. Or again, have a few of these in your, uh, in your purse or your briefcase. And what you're gonna have is a really healthy snack mid-afternoon when you usually hit that pitfall. Right. Um, you're getting good nutrition, and I call it long nutrition. That kind of sugar. What is that called? Sati satiety. Satiety, exactly. And makes you feel full. And it'll keep you there for a long time. You won't get that sugar carb drop. Mm -hmm. These types of complex sugars and complex carbohydrates will keep your energy going for a long time. Oh, that's good to know. So uh, from a bar and from a nutrition perspective, these are probably some really obvious applications. Mm -hmm. I'd like to surprise you with one more that oh. you might not have expected. Why no? Well, this is just a nice meat and charcuterie board. I know we what probably would love to have a glass of wine with this. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, so uh, really, the ingredients that are inside of a bar like this are the things you would normally put with a, a, a board like this, complementing meats and cheeses. You have the dried fruit. You have a little honey. And, and I like case, the way you've, you've made even more, more finger food size of those. Absolutely. It should be easy to pick up. Uh -huh. and. Well, I think what's great here too is uh, I'm gluten intolerant myself, uh -huh. so this would usually come with a baguette. Here oh. I can grab a little bit uh -huh. of that bar and use that to snack on the cheese and meats and you have an adult snack ready for a cocktail party. And, and one thing I have learned from visiting and having guests on the show, the gluten-free diet is good for everybody. Absolutely. So you never have to feel like you're being deprived or if you can't eat it, well your guest will enjoy everything that you have out there. No, absolutely. And, and the real hardcore gluten, gluten intolerant, uh -huh. really where that diet has come from, um, it's a dietary necessity, mm -hmm. but it, it certainly is not um, like taking medicine. No, It's no. still delicious food, uh, whole food, and, and nutritious food that can come in the form of a gluten-free snack. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to know that you've not added the extra sugar and that it is something that we can enjoy, and, and I think kids and, and adults will both enjoy. I'm ready. We'll try some. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank Sounds you, great. John. My pleasure. Karina, I can remember when my kids had birthdays, they thought for months ahead what the theme would be. And you said this is where you got the idea for the segment we're going to show now. I did. I had, so my oldest daughter, who is now 10, she was six at the time, and she was really obsessed with The Little Mermaid. Oh, okay. uh -huh. So, But, you know, ironically, the person she liked in The Little Mermaid was Ursula. So oh, she loved not the mermaid. The octopus. <laughs> she loved Ariel, but, yeah. you know, she was kind of obsessed with Ursula. And um, she wanted an undersea water party. And <laughs> um, she wanted to dress like an octopus. And I it was racking my head, and I'm like, I am not buying an octopus costume. <laughs> so this was my solution for it. It's a fun and easy solution. 
even if you're not doing a water party, you can use this for dress up oh, or Halloween. Yeah. It's just a fun oh, little would be easy fun. project. And so, so cute. She looks adorable. Thank you. And what, what I thought was interesting when you told me about it, you only make six legs because you use... Their little legs are the last two legs. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. So you have to remember that because uh -huh. they've got to have eight legs unless you're doing a squid, which we'll show <laughs> that as well. Okay. But, um, so what you need is you need... Um, well, so here's the problem. Knee socks come uh -huh. in sets of three, usually. Oh, yes. So, you've got so you buy. have to buy four sets uh -huh. of knee socks, not socks. So you will, you will probably have to, um, you know, your kids can wear the other ones or you're making three octopus outfits. I don't okay. know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so you'll just need knee socks mm -hmm. and you will need stuffing and a t-shirt. And here is oh. the great thing. I mean, all these things you can buy at your regular department store, uh -huh. um, but even better than that, you can reuse things. So uh -huh. if you have old socks, you can use those. If you have old t-shirts that are, you know. Maybe a spot here uh -huh. or there or something. Or then tear. you can just use those. Uh -huh. um, and if you want to embellish a t-shirt, you can, you know, add transfer paper like I did uh -huh. in this oh, one. Oh, yeah, it's got we, the little. We did a little uh -huh. octopus on oh, it, uh -huh. which was really That's fun. That's a cute idea. So I'm just going to show you how to stuff it okay. and get it ready, but it's a quick project, OK? So you need. Basic stuffing, you can mm -hmm. see my stuffing right and here. And you buy, can buy that in the buy big a, bags. Buy a big bag. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna stuff your... Start um, down at the toe. Start down at that toe. And here's the, the thing, do not overstuff. Oh. If you overstuff it, it's gonna be really hard to sew. Okay, so... Oh yeah, we've got to attach these to that t-shirt. Yes, and it's yeah. not the funnest thing anyway <laughs> to get it on there. It's very little sewing, but the sewing you do have to do is a little bit you know, uh -huh. a little painful. So make so. it easy for yourself. Do it, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're just going to stuff it all the way to the top, uh -huh. okay? So um, you can see and you can kind of uh -huh. work it out, you know, however you want. Okay, so the second thing you need to do is you're just going to um, um, go to your sewing machine and just sew the top up. Mm -hmm. just, keep the stuffing just in. Just keep the stuffing right. in because guess mm -hmm. what? The kids will find a way to open these up. <laughs> so go ahead and close it off. And then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to take your t-shirt and you are going to just make sure you only do six of these, remember, mm -hmm. and you're just going to pin it. So do you do three and three? I mean, evenly I, that's spaced? That's what I like or, to do. Okay. It makes it easier. I, see. I mean, the last three you do is going to be hard no matter what because you're, you're juggling all of these around. Uh -huh. um, but I just go ahead and pin it on there and then just take it through my sewing machine. If you want to take it through twice to stabilize it, you totally uh -huh. can. Or if you want to do things like embellish it by putting a ruffle on top so you can't oh. see the machine or pom-poms or whatever, you uh -huh. can do that. And you have an octopus <laughs> costume so quickly. Now let me tell you, let's just show let's you a couple of projects. So this one actually has a ruffle on it. The shirt actually came with the ruffle. Oh. But look how let's fun get all that the legs is. legs out here. Oh, how and, fun. <laughs> and the fun part is, depending on your kid, so my six-year-old would definitely wear this with a big tutu underneath, you know, uh -huh. flying out, <laughs> and maybe a pair of shorts. Or, you know, my other daughter, my 10-year-old, would wear this with, like, capris oh, underneath. Uh -huh. Little leggings and or capris. And then her, of course, her... Matching, matching socks, socks so uh -huh. that her legs are part of the set. So How cute. that's pretty fun. This is our squid costume. This is kind of my mistake. I actually Whoops. put eight legs on this. So that means that your daughter is going to put on the last Two set <laughs> and she'll have 10 legs. But you can see oh, that uh -huh. this is actually in great shape for you to add embellishment to uh -huh. it to make it fun. You'll notice for my daughter, we did a beanie hat as well. Uh -huh. And that gives you like that feeling of, you know, she's like a little octopus with a big flower <laughs> on it. So it's just meant to be fun and so simple. This is a really fast project. I, I can see, yeah, like I your sewing sewed techniques. I it That's right great. in. That's probably smart because if anyone else is around, they're mm -hmm. going to be beating these legs yes. against and things. Yes, and if you have a, ba a baby boy like I do, then he's going to play with these. <laughs> he won't put it on, but he'll play with uh -huh. these. So, Well, these are so cute. I would have never thought about making that, and I certainly am like you. I wouldn't have gone to buy one to, to, you know, to wear mm -hmm. for one occasion. I bet she was the happiest little girl at the party. She really was, and <laughs> she still has fun in it. So uh -huh. it, it's just a fun useful project for their dress uh -huh. up. And they can help do all the stuffing and then yes. you know you can do the sewing. Well thank you so much for showing us how cute she looked and thank you. 
I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to use fresh herbs from the garden for cooking. We'll talk about dyeing silk fabric and show a delightful new cupcake project from Wilton. One of my guests on the next show is going to talk about growing your own herbs. Then she'll share some recipes and ideas for using them. We're also going to meet a fashion designer who's going to show how to dye silk fabric as he shows us his red collection. He uses the cochineal beetle, an insect native to South America, to dye the fabric. And he says that Duchess silk satin or organza is the best quality of silk to color and he'll explain why. And finally, another guest is going to demonstrate how to make a gumball cupcake. These would be adorable favors or decorations at a child's birthday party. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a special booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. We are celebrating our 40th year on PBS. This booklet is titled the 40th Anniversary Series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this commemorative booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter too. Go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. We would also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you.